Hi, my name is Emily, and today I'm going to be talking to you about tight junctions. Now, since as of three days ago, I didn't actually know what tight junctions were, it'll be a fairly basic overview, um, but I did borrow my two-year-old's whiteboard, so it's totally legitimate. Um, so, to begin with, cells are amazing, right? Um, especially epithelial cells. So you've got all of these cells in the epithelial and the endothelial uh, sheets. And they work together to, to provide a barrier. They become this sheet or membrane um, to cover, a covering. So you've got these totally realistic looking cells, right? Epithelial cells, and they are just packed. But what happens is, even though they're so tightly packed and the cells do a fantastic job at letting in what they want and keeping out what they don't want, um, there is this minuscule space in between them called the inter interstellar, intercellular space, not interstellar space, which would be exciting, but it's not the case. Intercellular space. Now, so just like if I were to put my hands together and push really hard, it looks like I've got this barrier, but water would still be able to slip through. So take that and way, way shrink it down. So you've got cells, and even though they're really smushed together, there's these spaces between that molecules could get through. So what you need are tight junctions. So you get these tight junctions that are made up of proteins. So actually, if you were to see one from the side, so if we were stacking them sideways like this, what it would look like would be this little strand, since it is a protein. It's kind of sewing basically these cells together, creating a barrier. So there's three types, major types, and those are the cludin, the clodin, and the jams. Now, you've got three main types, and there are more, um, but the one I focused mainly on was the clodins in my research, because those are the main ones for the structural and fun functional elements. They're the most prevalent. Okay, so you've got these barriers. They have two functions. One is the barrier function, right? Because it's keeping out what you don't want to get through. Just like the cell is doing, keeping molecules, allergens, bacteria um, out. Um, there's another function that's called the fence function. Now, as far as I understand it, that's more a regulator of permeability, not necessarily a barrier, but it does still provide the cohesive like membrane to go across. So, why are tight junctions important? Well, you can find them all over the entire epithelial. So you were talking the inside of the lungs, we're talking or the lungs, we're talking about the gastrointestinal tract liver, kidneys, skin. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want things seeping in or seeping out of your skin. So this helps on this minuscule scale of keeping things where they should be. Now, some examples. Um, I read an article about tight junction-related human diseases, and the list was phenomenal um, that they were related to. Uh, in the gastrointestinal tract, Crohn's disease, ulcer ulcerative colitis, uh, celiacs, the liver, jaundice. Now, it's not saying that malfunctions in the tight junctions causes this, but they are very interconnected. The same way this article was theorizing that um, there's a really complex connection between cancer cells and these tight junctions because when the cancer cell takes over or mutates basically, then these tight junctions lose their cohesiveness and basically what happens is the cells lose polarity and they just go crazy. So it was really interesting. They, they were hypothesizing that there's a lot of things that could be used to treat uh, different types of illnesses or, or diseases with figuring out which of those clodins is malfunctioning. And the other article I read talked about genetics and the clodin, so that there were um, genetic mutations that caused either the, the clodins to 1 through 27, because there's 27 of them listed right now at least, um, to 
genetically that they were genetically mutated so passed down hereditary like certain ranges of hearing loss and um, loss of vision in diabetic patients and things like that um, that were passed down um, generation to generation with faulty genetics having to do with the production or the usefulness of those tight junctions which are really important so hopefully um, as a future nutritionist this understanding will really help me out because um, all those things that I knew about like leaky gut um, and uh, jaundice and things like that I now understand edema all those things are caused by malfunctioning tight junctions or not the presence of them not being there so if you have any questions feel free to let me know I will cite my sources down in the description so thanks have a good day